Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Grace Presbyterian Church on this beautiful, warm summer day as we all celebrate Independence Day weekend here. Glad to have all of you. We have wonderful, wonderful music planned for this service, so you are already experiencing that with Linda here her with her prelude, and you're going to experience that throughout the service. I have several announcements that I want to let you know about. First off, right here in front of me, Look at this. This is plastic bags, friends. Bonnie, stand up here real quick. Stand up here real quick. Here, grab the end of that. Yeah, look at that. That's all plastic bags, friends. That's like 900 bags in one of these, okay? Or 600 bags or something. It's a lot of bags, right? Look at all that. We weaved that together with all the bags that you all donated. Yeah, we got, we got, we got some patriotism in here. We got, we got all kinds of stuff going on in here, friends. But these will go to homeless folks all over the city. And it's durable. It's soft, okay? I promise you, this is softer than some of your mattresses at home, Okay. And it's lightweight, and so it's easily mobile, okay? And so a huge thanks to all of you. I want you all to give yourselves a big round of applause for that. Thank you, Bonnie. Next, I want to let you know we're starting our next missions drive. Of course we are, right? We are collecting used children's clothing for Love, Inc., okay? For their part of their back-to-school Drive is collecting used children's clothing, okay? So bring all that in from your kids, your grandkids, steal it from a neighbor, whatever. You know, bring it on in, and then we will have a spot out here on the table or a box for you all to donate that in over the next several weeks. Next, Lunch Bunch is tomorrow right here at Grace for lunch at noon. If you're interested in coming out and having lunch with us, make sure that you see Elaine and let her know so there is enough food. Our teenagers are back from Arizona after having a fantastic mission trip week with Naomi House. They had a great time. We're glad to have them back. And uh, of course, they are, uh, some of them are here today, but most of them are uh, at home, exhausted. And we will see them here in a couple of weeks as they will be presenting about their trip. Finally, today after church is a potluck lunch. Give yourself a round of applause if you brought something for the potluck, okay? If you didn't, you are still invited, okay? Because it's a lot of food and we've got to eat it all, okay? So no matter what your status is with the food today, whether you brought something or not, stay around for our potluck lunch. We'd love, love to have a conversation with you after church. With that, let us pass down those uh, attendance pads and make sure you grab prayer cards and all those kinds of things for later on in the service. And with that, let us stand as we sing our opening song, O Beautiful for Spacious Skies.
you may be seated this morning. As we go into our litany, I want you to consider for a moment what freedom, what liberty means to you. And I want you to begin to think about those around the world who might not have those freedoms, who might not have that sense of liberty. And what does it mean for us to be a people who are in pursuit of something greater for all people here in this country and around the world? As we think of that, let's join together in this litany. As we remember the gifts of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, let's offer our thanks and prayers to God, the giver of all good gifts. We thank you, Lord. For the tribes and nations who inhabited this land for generation upon generation, we thank you, Lord. For those who braved the long journey by sea and by land to come to this place, we thank you, Lord. For those who laid the foundation of our democracy and who pledged liberty and justice for all, we thank you, Lord. For those who built this country brick by brick, road by road, and town by town, For the brave and the courageous in uniform who paid for our freedom by their service and sacrifice. For the innovators and artists, poets and teachers, farmers and factory workers. For all who labor and provide for the common good. For this land with its peaks and valleys, coasts and deserts, fields and meadows. For our own community. For those who came before us in this place and for our neighbors near and far, we thank you, Lord. Lord, we pray for our nation that we might always be a people and a place that promotes liberty and freedom, truth and justice. That we might always be a nation where all are free to worship and pray. That we might be a beacon of freedom to all those who live under the shadow of terror and hopelessness. That those who are elected to govern and lead would be guided by you and be ever aware of the trust that has been given them. That we would be a people who repent from our sins and who always return to you and to your grace. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Do I have any kids who are willing to join me up here today? Come on down. If you're a child, come on up here. we got a lot of gracing to do this morning, friends. There's a lot of people who need to feel God's grace this morning, and you're going to help me grace this crowd. Oh, man, I love, I love this. Fantastic. Come on over. Come on over. So, on this... Independence Day weekend. Anyone have any plans that they want to tell us about? What are you doing? Uh huh. Whoa! So you wait a minute. You're going to a party for you at your grandmother's house, and the day after tomorrow, and then tomorrow you're doing a triathlon with your dad. Holy moly, look at you. That is awesome. Yeah, love it, love it. Any other plans? Any barbecues, any fireworks watching, any light show watching? Yeah? Um, it's about 4th of July, yeah. The sparklers. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, wow. Like black oh, that's cool. What about you? What are you doing? And, and, fairy. and a fairy one. You're celebrating your brother's birthday? That's fantastic. How old is he going to be? Four. Are you going to be four? Holy moly. Four on the 4th of July weekend? That's fantastic. That is cool. <laughs> Happy birthday. Let's grace these folks. Can we do that? Okay. So we're going to say it first, okay? And then we're going to invite them to stand and say it with us all together. So all of you, this is how we do it. We're going to say grace in me. We're going to grace in you. Grace in all of us. Okay. Can we do this? 
Grace in me, grace in you, grace in all of us and everyone. Please stand as we say, grace in me, grace in you, and grace in all of us. Kids, you can go back to wherever you came from. And friends, let's all pass the peace of Jesus Christ to one another this morning. Okay, and now settle in because you don't even want to miss the intro to Bonnie and Suzanne. Go.
<laughs> so it doesn't matter what I say after this, right? Like, we're good, we're good. <laughs> Our scripture text this morning comes from Psalm 13. How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I bear pain in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all day long? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes or I'll sleep the sleep of death. And my enemy will say, I have prevailed. My foes will rejoice because I am shaken. But I trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. And here our scripture text ends. Let's consider how we'll apply these words of scripture to our lives this Morning. Today we begin a new sermon series, Vibrant and Abundant, as we talk about what it means to be a thriving faith community. And today we want to talk about the good news of the gospel. What does it mean to have good news? What does it mean to lift up the ideals of our faith? And considering the weekend, what does it mean to lift up the ideals of our nation? Our country, our culture, our communities. What does it mean to be a people of faith? What does it mean to be a people who live here? And how do we create vibrancy and abundance for more people, for all people, and hold those ideals strong rather than descending into our pettiness, rather than descending into our selfishness, Rather than using independence and liberty as something that is focused on me, instead of focused on us and all. Independence can get quite adolescent, can't it? I mean, when we begin to think about teenagers, they all want independence, don't they? Usually for all the wrong reasons, right? For all the wrong stuff. Independence, freedom, and liberty, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, these are not meant to be self-centered endeavors. They're meant to be good news. In our own faith, in our own Christianity, how often does church and religion become about the puffing up of self? rather than the service to and for others. Throughout our own history as a nation, throughout our own history as a faith, throughout our own history as humanity, we can either lift up the ideals and strive for something better and greater, or we can shrink back and go, you know what? <clears throat> this is all about me, right? And so when we come to this psalm here today, I want us to enter into it and realize there's a lot of people in the world asking, how long? How long will this situation that I am in exist? How long will God allow this situation to exist? And when will there be good news? How long? Will I be in chains? How long will my freedom not exist? How long will I not have liberty? Not just for me, but for my children and my family, my neighbors, my community. Into these places, friends, you and I are supposed to bring good news gospel-sized news that there is love, that there is grace, that there is hope, 
that there is healing, that there is freedom, that there's liberty, that there's justice, that peace is not just something that we give sentiment to, but it's something that our lives are supposed to be in pursuit of. That joy doesn't come from a temporary consumeristic happiness, but comes from something that we share with other people. Vibrancy and abundance isn't because I had all of my stuff today and looking around and seeing other people not having. When I look around a war-torn world, it is not me lifting up my temporary safety and security in my bubble and in my box where I go, oh, good, we have peace. It's by looking at the world and going, we need peace. When I look at America, I'm not looking around going, wow, look. Look at all of our suburban homes. Aren't we all just thriving? I look around the whole nation and go, what does it mean for the pillars of our democracy to be strengthened? What does it mean for an electorate of citizens to come together and say, we are in this together? What does it mean for us to push back against our media and political parties and go, no, you will not divide us? What does it mean for us to look across the street at our neighbor and go, we didn't just happen to buy homes in the same location, but we are meant to be a village in this together. Good news comes from us holding up to this question of how long with an answer of not long, not long. The Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King may have had a speech about that. Here's what he said. I know you're asking today, how long will it take? Somebody's asking, how long will prejudice blind the visions of men, darken their understanding and drive bright-eyed wisdom from her sacred throne? Somebody's asking, when will wounded justice lying prostate on the streets of Selma and Birmingham and communities all over the South be lifted from this dust of shame to reign supreme among the children of men? Somebody's asking, when will the radiant star of hope be plunged against the nocturnal bosom of this lonely night? Plucked from weary souls with chains of fear and the manacles of death. How long will justice be crucified and truth bear it? I come to say to you this afternoon, however difficult the moment, however frustrating the hour, it will not be long. Because truth crushed to earth will rise again. How long? Not long. Because no lie can live forever. How long? Not long. Because you shall reap what you sow. How long? Not long. Truth forever on the scaffold. Wrong forever on the throne. Yet that scaffold sways the future. And behind the dim unknown standeth God within the shadow. Keeping watch above his own. How long? Not long. Because the arc of the moral universe is long, but it bends towards justice. How long? Not long. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed the fateful lightning of his terrible Swiss sword. 
His truth is marching on. He has sounded forth the trumpet that shall never call retreat. He is sifting out the hearts of men before his judgment seat. Oh, be swift, my soul, to answer him. Be jubilant, my feet. Our God is marching on. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. On this weekend, I, like you, I'm going to see some laser light shows in the sky. That's new. I'm going to see fireworks. I may set a few off. (laughs) Definitely going to have some sparklers with the kids, right? I'm going to have barbecues. I'm going to have a lot of fun. And yet, in the midst of all of that, I will hold up and hold out for good news because the world needs a people who are willing to go out in the world and remind others that we are in pursuit of something bigger, greater, larger than ourselves. The ideals and truths of our nation but so much larger the truths and ideals of our faith, of gospel, of good news. Amen. I'm going to ask you to eventually sing along, but I get us started because I'm special. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters, this land was made for you and me. As I went walking that ribbon of highway, I saw above me that endless skyway. I saw below with me this time. This land is your land. This land is my land. From California to the New York Island. From the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. I've roamed in diamond desert and all around me a voice was sounding this land was made for you and me here we go this land is your land this land is my land from California to the New York Island from the Redwood Forest Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. When the sun comes shining, as I was strolling, and the wheat fields waving, and the dust clouds rolling, the fog was lifting, and a voice came chanting, This land was made. This land was your land. This land is my land. 
from California to the New York Islands, from the Redwood Forest to the Gulf Stream waters. This land was made for you and me. Why don't you go ahead and stand with me as we affirm our faith together, as we tip our minds, our hearts, our souls towards that great idea, towards the gospel of Jesus Christ with the Apostles' Creed saying, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And you may be seated. Friends, this is God's table. And as God extends it to you, God extends it to all. It is my table and your table, just as it's my land and your land because it's God's land, God's creation, and God's creatures. And so God extends this invitation out and says, if you're hungry, come and eat. If you're thirsty, come and drink. If you're lonely, come and commune. If you need a table where you're accepted, affirmed, celebrated, loved, it's right here. For each and every human being that's ever existed on the planet, it's here. And so that invitation is for all of us today. No matter what you did this week or last year or last decade, even those of you who accomplished a great deal this week, we don't care. Those of you who are the holiest in the room, some of you are those people, and those who are on the opposite end who really, really mess it up, and everyone in between. For those of you who believed every single last syllable of that Apostles' Creed, and for those of you who went, ah, I don't know what I can get behind there, and everyone in between, you are invited to the table. In that invitation, we're going to sing it to one another this morning. Come to the table of grace. Please join in. bow your heads with me as we pray. O God of goodness, God of grace, God of glory, we give you thanks, O God, for the bountiful gifts 
that you provide to us. A world full of vitality, vibrancy, and abundance. And yet, O oh God, in that thanksgiving, we look around and see ourselves. How often we grasp, how often we clasp, how often we close off, how often we prevent, how often we create scarcity in a creation full, full of infinity and eternity. God, remind us, is in our sin that our world experiences not enough. It is in our evil that we hold back. It is in our not coming together that people don't have peace. God, remind us that the good news that you have given us is one that started on day one of creation, that there is light that will overcome darkness, that there is goodness that will overcome the chaos of our world, that there is an order that can be put into place that will allow for creation and imagination and newness to exist. Allow us. No, don't just allow us. Give us a fervor, oh God, for your ways, for your truth, for your kind of freedom and liberty, for one that fulfills laws rather than tries to heed the letter. God, allow us to see ourselves as people who can come to your table and give us a passion for inviting others to this table as well. Bring your kingdom. Bring your will. Bring forgiveness. Bring a conquering of evil. One bite and one cup at a time. As we lift up the prayer that's come down through the ages, starting with these words, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. When Jesus was with his disciples in the upper room celebrating what would be their last Passover all together, he lifted up bread. He broke it. And he gave it to each and every one of them saying these words, take, eat. This is my body. It is broken for you. All of you eat of it. And in like manner, he lifted up the cup. He said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is for the forgiveness of your sins. All of you drink of it. And those words come down to us, my body, my blood, for you, all of you, eat and drink of it. I'm going to ask our servers to come at this time as they are coming. Here's how we do communion here at Grace. We come down one row at a time right down the middle. You come right up here. You take a piece of bread or a gluten-free cracker that's in the basket. You take it. You then take a cup. If you are able, take that cup back to your seat. We will all drink of that common cup there at the end. If you have any sort of mobility issues, stay right in your seat. Raise your hand at the end. We will bring it out to you and serve you right there where you are. All of you are invited. Come to the table.
Had to chew, sorry. (laughs) Friends, this is the cup of the good news. A salvation, freedom for all people, love for the whole world. I want you to take a moment, look around, smile at some people, see the people who you're with this morning, wave, point, laugh, smile, poke, do something, you know. (laughs) More of you needed to take my invitation to poke there, you know, I mean, come on, come on. (laughs) Friends, we're in this together. Part of what we do on this weekend across America is we hang out with people, friends and family and neighbors and oftentimes strangers that we've never seen before who we're elbow to elbow with at some, you know, fireworks festival or something and going, I don't know you, right? Be in it together. It's good to poke. It's good to smile. It's good to wink. It's good to to wave and point and all those kinds of things. To notice that kind of thing. And the more that we generate that, there's a generosity that comes out of that. There is a common good that flows through all of that. This time of generosity in our service each and every week is meant to be that kind of thing as well. We're literally getting out wallets and phones and purses and checkbooks and cash and all those kinds of things. Did you hear all that? Yeah, get, all, get all those out. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. And there's kind of this bumping that happens as we do it as well, isn't there? There's kind of a little bit of chaos and commotion as we do that because it's like, oh, yeah, I need to do that now at this point in the service. I need to get this out and do something with other people, and it becomes a poke to the person next to us to be like, oh, yeah, I need to do that too. So let's all get into it together. Let's get a little giddy about giving this morning, okay? I promise you, you'll like it. You, you'll be like, oh, that was kind of fun, actually, when we all do it together. With that, let our ushers come this morning. <laughs>
Stay standing, stay standing, stay standing. There you go. Friends, we are grateful. We are grateful for beautiful music this morning. Thank you so much. We are grateful for freedom, for liberty, for independence. We are grateful for good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ flowing in our lives and flowing out of our lives into the lives of others. So as we consider that gratitude this morning, we're going to sing, My Country, Tis of Thee. As we are singing that song, may your gratitude come flowing out of you as we all sing very loudly together. Friends, as you go out into all of your celebrations over the next few days, may you take the gospel with you. May you lift up good news. May you lift up the ideals and the values that you and I so long for in the world and be proclaimers of it, knowing that the Holy Spirit of God goes out into the world in front of you. That the wind of God is at your back. That the breath of God is all around. On your left and on your right. Above you and below you. Inside of you. And all around you. Today and forevermore. Hey, join us for our potluck right now. Go eat.